Hi everyone. Uh, people have been asking me about this whiteboard and what it was trying to say. It was taken in uh, 2017 plus or minus in an advanced agile master class. So, so who knows? You know, somebody asked some questions and I put some things on the whiteboard. Um, uh, but there's some interesting bits in here, so I, I thought I'd go over it here with you. Uh, just to subtract from the conversation, what I'm really not going to cover. On the top left, you've got uh, the Shuha Rikokoro sequence that I was coming out with in 2015, 16, 17 time frame, explaining a lot. You see there on the, on the left where it says uh, guest leadership, uh, building guest leadership culture. Boss, ac boss actions are performed by anybody. Uh, that's a whole separate interesting topic uh, about guest leadership. Not the point of all the squiggles on, in the main part of it. And at the bottom, it looks like we've got to cross the chasm curve and, and what it means to try to do agile transformation when you've, when you've crossed the chasm and you're working with the late majority. Uh, those are not the interesting bits. What the interesting bits, at least for this discussion, are going to be that that thing that wiggle in the center where it says Nyquist above and it's got squiggly lines uh, down below and some arrows pointing up. And we have the, uh, the Kinevin framework and, uh, and, and uh, David Snowden's changed that name a few times at the bottom. Simple, it was simple, then it was easy, now it's clear. I, you know, it doesn't seem like simple or easy or clear if you can't figure out what it is. But there I wrote simple, I think these days it's called clear. Um, and then, and then this, it's a two matrix instead of uh, whatever he draws. And then on the bottom right is this um, this Uda thingy with this, some strange looks like smiley faces in it. And it's those three that 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 make it kind of interesting. And it'll take me a little bit to kind of get through this. So let's let's get started. Uh, the point. Let's start with the wiggly curve. So the point is that the uh, the world is changing all the time. And what I happen to be referencing there is a theorem. From, um, from mathematics called the, the Nyquist sampling theorem used in all of engineering. And it says that if, if something, a signal is changing, it could be an audio waveform or a light waveform or electromagnetic or any kind of waveform. If you want to know what the, what the, what's happening, what the curve actually is, you have to check in on it or sample it at least twice as fast as it's changing, so twice the frequency. So if you have something going like this, let's just pretend you had something that was changing once a day, you would have to check in on it uh, at least uh, twice a day uh, to find out what the true shape of that curve is, if assuming it's a nice, you know, kind of steady curve. So the Nyquist sampling theorem says you have to sample it twice the maximum frequency. And then, and then the, the arrows down below will show what happens if you don't sample often enough and so you sample it, and then of course it wiggles a bit, and then you sample it again, and it's not, it's not true or accurate what you're going to find, and 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 you'll get a strange, uh, looking uh, perception of what's happening if you if you sample too slowly. And an example of this, uh, I'll give you two kind of examples. But one example of this is when you see those videos of a um, uh, helicopter, and it looks like the blades are standing still or not moving. It just means that the, the shutter of the camera is hitting exactly at the same rotational uh, period as the, the blades. So the blades just happen to be in the same place every single time the shutter goes. So it looks like the, the thing is stationary or if it goes a little slower, it might look like the blades are going backwards or, you know, something like that. Um, now, where this becomes relevant is when we're trying to do, uh, let's say, product development, which is, which is you know, what I would have been talking about, something about. Um, and I love the example, my favorite example, and it'll no doubt go into my next book. Uh, I've already written about it and talked about it a little bit. Is We have somebody who knows all about modern uh, uh, agile development, modern product management, prototyping, user feedback. They know everything. They know everything. It just happens that they live in a in a village in some mountainous region, I'll say Nepal. They live in the Himalayas somewhere. And they get to come into town like once every two years, right? So they do all the right things and they, they say, okay, well, I know about modern product management. And they take a prototype down and they mm, go down the mountain hiking and cart and hitchhiking and trains and buses and whatever. They go down to the town and they do all the right things and they talk to people and get the feedback and show the things and they go back up to the mountain and they work for another two years, you know, then they decide, okay, 
got it. Now we'll go back down the mountain again, and they mm, go back down the mountain, and two years have passed. Now, if this had been done, let's say, in I'll pick a number, in the 1400s, life didn't change maybe quite so much in the 1400s, and if two years went by, probably, you know, possibly, maybe people's habits and tastes hadn't changed that much in two years. But in these days, and, you know, we're in the 21st century, two years, all bets are off, uh, you know, it works. So this person has all the right techniques. The problem is they're not checking in on the world fast enough. To, all the right techniques, just too slow, that doesn't work. And that's an example of those bottom arrows, right? The world is changing at this speed, and they're checking in on the world, sampling at this speed. So they're not going to get good information. That's all kind of obvious, but that's what that's what the uh, you know that uh, picture is saying. And of course, the really squiggly line underneath is the world is really going like crazy stuff, you know. And you're sampling and you're trying to make sense of it. And if you're just too slow, it doesn't matter. Now we go to the the the, the box on the right. That's my my little rendering of Kinevin, and I don't think that you need to make Kinevin in a box. It, you know, it's just to me, it's a little it's it's a linear thing. Uh, it says simple there. Okay, it's clear these days. But but clear just means, or simple just means, uh, you don't have to you don't have to worry about it. It's it's things are obvious, and you just decide what to do, and then you do what you do. Now uh, David Snowden makes, and and many people do make this distinction between complicated and complex. To the person on the street, complicated and complex are synonyms. They're just interchangeable. They don't have a difference. But it's become popular these days to, to make them different. And, and the trick is this, that the word complicated means you can, in principle, sit still and think about it and come up with the correct answer. So uh, the simplest example is, a, is tic-tac-toe. Right? You, could, you could compute out, I don't know, there's 160 moves. It's not that, it's not that you know, big. Uh, so you could sit and, and calculate out all the moves if you wanted to. A chess is complicated in theory. Uh, you could, in principle, um, calculate out all the moves from the beginning to the end in the modern, in the modern you know, um, uh, uh, chess uh, bots have, have got that. The complex in this, in this phrasing means you can't even possibly, you are not going to calculate your way out. This is a big system. It's too complicated. Things are interrelated. Small differences make big differences. Um, and, and you're not going to work it out. You're not going to work it out. And so the the, the big, and then chaos at the top says nothing's connected to nothing. Um, there's two choices for chaos. Actually, one is that nothing is connected to nothing. The other is a deterministic chaos, which we have, you know, from physics, which says in fact it's deterministic. You you could in principle calculate it out. The only problem is that it would take an infinite length number to represent. And if you're off by any, if you don't have actually infinite, the, 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 the situation is going to diverge. It's, it's deterministic, but in fact, um, things will be very, very far apart after a while, even if they looked like they were close to begin with. So we've got this, just a straight sequence. Things are clear, complicated. Uh, you could think about it, complex and chaotic. Now, the, the big thing that, you know, thank you to David Snowden, who goes around the world and is, is, um, uh, convincing or teaching or trying to convince executives that the world is not in fact complicated, the world is complex, and that's important because in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and, and even probably you know today to some extent, uh -huh. many executives honestly think that you could, in principle, sit down, write out requirements, stare at them really hard, it's, just, it's nothing but a straight calculation, stare at them really hard and say, yep, those are all correct, or, you know, find all the errors, and then sit down and design, a design, and get it all right, and you'd get it all right, and then when you deployed it and you put it into the world, it would work exactly as you had planned. And that any error that, a, that comes out anywhere along the line is just because you didn't think hard enough. And it used to be, that used to be the pressure, even in my first book in 1996, um, I, I, I said, I've written the best I can. I need to send it out for you and find out what people think. Uh, it's probably got a bunch of errors somewhere. And my editor literally said, then don't send it out. Stare at it some more and find out what's wrong. And I'm going like, can't, can't. So 
People seriously thought that you could, in principle, just sit still and think it all through. Now, if we take our person up in the Himalayas, uh, that person, you know, in, in, in that they, person didn't have to come down. Uh, or if they came down once, that would have been sufficient. They could sit there for two years and think about it and get it straight, and then they would have it right. Okay. But the, the world doesn't like that, as we know. The world is, as that picture shows, the squiggly line. The, the, the world is wiggling and all the people are doing things. So we don't live in a world that is merely complicated. We live in a world that is at least in the complex realm. So, you know, per, the, per Kinevin, then, then if it was complicated, if it was merely complicated, you could think, you could research, and then you could decide what to do, and you, you know, then off you go and do whatever you do. In the complex realm, using complex different than complicated, it says you aren't going to get, it's, you'll never get that from. So you have to probe, you have to probe, you have to probe. You check, you check, you check. And then honestly, what you do, what I call make your best next guess, right? You make your best next guess and you probe. And you're trying to probe fast enough that you can track the changes, you know, because the system's always changing. So you're going probe, probe, probe. You pick up the patterns. You pick up certain causal effects. You pick up what you can, and and out you go. And then and then so probe and then take your best next guess and take your action. And then up in the chaotic range, you know, nothing's connected to nothing. You aren't going to work it out. Uh, so you just might as well guess, you know, and then do something. Now, now here's the point. Kinevin, as stated in its, you know, in its usual form, doesn't have time incorporated in it. And it's been bothering me you know, for a long time. It didn't have time incorporated. So this was my a way of including time. This is where the Nyquist sampling theorem comes into it. And you've heard me say often enough, um, you know, if you're fast enough, if you're fast enough, if you check the world fast enough. And my sort of aha here that I was passing along was that if you are not fast enough, then everything looks one stage more up the scale. I won't say more complicated, but up the scale than otherwise. So what it says on the whiteboard is if you have enough time, if you have enough time and you're in a complicated realm, then you could think, research, and decide, right? So in chess, if you had enough time, you could calculate out all the moves or whatever you wanted. Um, but you typically don't have enough time, right? So you don't have enough time. And even when most people play tic-tac-toe, they don't calculate it out. They, they don't have the time and the energy. So they do, they think a bit of it, they do some research, and then they take a best guess. I don't know, let's go. That's what, that's what I got, right? So that looks a lot like they're behaving in the complex realm. The, the world looks complex to them. They can't figure it out. They probe, and then they probe, and then they probe, and they try to make sense out of what they're, what they're probing. Now, if it's a complex thing, or like, like the squiggly line under the Nyquist, um, then, then the problem is that you probe, like our person in, in the mountains with the product, you probe, the world changes too much, you probe again, the world changes too much, you're not making sense of it, it looks chaotic to you, so you might as well take a guess, right? You probe and you go, oh, well, oh, let's do this, right? So the thing I was, I was showing in here um, was when you add time to the Kinevin framework, um, everything looks one stage, you know, up in, I'll just call it in difficulty, uh, if you don't have enough time. So you have enough time, you do the thingy. If you don't have enough time, it looks one stage up, you know. So complex looks like, you might as well be like in chaotic, and complicated looks like, might as well be in complex. Now, we don't really need the, the, the all four, because if it's if it's simple or if it's clear then you you know the whole point is you don't have to work at it too hard you know stack the chairs you just stack the chairs you know like that if it's chaotic you know you can't do anything anyway so really the only two you kind of have to play with is is it complicated or or complex can you think your way through it or can you not actually think your way and then do you have enough time to actually think your way through it uh, and, and maybe you don't have enough time to think your way through it so that's now putting the Nyquist sampling theorem and time into Kinevin and then on the bottom I've got the OODA loop and the OODA loop um, was from uh, John Boyd fighter pilot and he was able to always win his little dog fights in real life and in, and in simulations and what he said uh, is that basically he could get the other person to spend so much time just trying to literally figure out where their airplane was that they didn't have time to change and, and control the situation. And by being faster at, 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 at figuring out what was going on and reacting, 
he could um, then, then move faster than and disrupt their sequence. So the OODA is uh, first you, or you observe, you pick up some data, that's the first O. Then you orient yourself, and it takes time. If you imagine if you're in a fighter uh, pilot cockpit and the world is changing around like this, it takes time to figure out where the ground is. You need to know where the ground is, you need to know up and down are and stuff like that. So it takes time to orient yourself, and then it takes time to decide what to do, and then you act and you go back around. Things have changed, you observe, then you orient. So the OOD, observe, orient, decide, is exactly, you know, matches then what, what I've got in the, that Kinevan framework where I just go up to the decide part, or we have the, the, the Nyquist thing and the person up in the mountains coming down. They come down, they observe, they orient, they decide, they go back, they come back, right? Oh, they have to observe again, they have to orient again because everything's changed. So now we're back to how fast can you be sampling the world and this thing, this loop, O-O-D-A, is called the OODA loop. And they use the phrase to get inside the other person's OODA loop. And so, for example, uh, Google, Amazon uh, are particularly very well known for being able to, to react really quickly. So they can change things, change things, right? They've already got their AI going. they got their equivalents to chat GPT already running. And anybody else is going like, wait, what's happening? What, what's this chat GP thing? What, what am I supposed to do now? So anybody else is still inside the observe and orienting, and, and these people are already in the, in, they, they, they can do orient, um, observe, orient, decide, act really, really fast. So the OODA loop fits very well with that, that chart with, with Kinevin, that whole thing about do you have enough time or do you not have enough time has to do with that OODA loop, how fast can you sequence, right? Observe, orient, decide, act, observe, orient, decide, act. And it connects with this with the with the with the the Nyquist the sampling, which is are you checking on the world fast enough to actually keep track of what's what's happening there? And that's really, really hard. So that's it. That's the you know, that's the mashup there, which is is kind of fun board, which is the, the Nyquist sampling theorem. Um, Kinevin and OODA loop and putting time on, on Kinevin and yeah, best wishes to you. There we go.